hello and uh, welcome to a short video we are going to do a few videos between me and mrs c we're going to do um, a few beginners um wise watts exposure triangles and stuff like that we're going to do an aperture quick aperture video wire the difference f-stops and sort of thing we're going to do an iso video we'll do a quick shutter speed video um and maybe a composition sort of leading lines type of thing as well so we'll probably put four little videos together for you just in a quick series just to show you the basics of the camera now this is really bread and butter stuff so if you're a fully fledged photographer and you know what you're doing you really won't need to watch this but there might be a little tiny thing in there that might help you along your way now i have got my dark glasses on i brought me sun me normal glasses out so you won't be able to see my eyes um, but i'm here in front of the camera um, we're at the canal we, we tried to do this last week but it just didn't work on the lens i had this lens is a much better lens for doing this on um, i've got the 55 to 200 on which we've had on all morning we have been out and if you haven't seen the videos check them out there was a perfect morning but this is just purely about aperture so i've got some notes on my phone um, but the first thing about aperture or f-stops is the fact that um, it controls how much light gets into your camera now the aperture works by um, the blades inside the camera the aperture the, the what's it called <laughs> What's the thing inside your camera called? They're just aperture blades, aren't they? I've gone blank altogether. Um, yeah, but it's, it's caused by the aperture blades inside the camera. So if you've got a larger f-stop, which means you've got a smaller number, or a, a smaller f-stop, which means you've got a larger number, uh, and basically means uh, as you put down to f.2, f.1, f.1.4 uh, and stuff like that, the blades inside the camera... Uh, the aperture ring actually opens up so it lets more light into the camera if you stop down to an f16 f18 and f22 it actually closes the blades down inside and you get this tiny little iris that's what i was thinking about the iris when i um this tiny little hole in the center of the camera now i will try and show you that on a manual camera a manual lens denise has got one i might try and do a little bit of video in a moment just to show you the difference when you zoom in and zoom out um so i ought to bring my notes up on my phone really and i just so i can see what it is i'm talking about because you know me i'm useless with notes don't want to know all that let's get me notes on notes f-stops so yeah um the hole in the lens basically that's what i was trying to say explain to you uh, let's more light in f22 but with that becomes another problem as well by letting light in and letting light you know blocking light to control how much light's in your camera it also causes depth of field now depth of field is the one thing you have to be careful when you're shooting landscape photography and uh am i in the middle there because <laughs> the lens is all over the place i've got my camera lady on the go on the is that all right? It's looking up. Thank you very much. It's just the lens looked like it was looking up the street then. Um, yeah, I'll do the talking. You do the videoing. Right, so yeah, it, it causes um, different depth of field in the image. Um, so I'm not going to explain the light letting in the camera because that's basically down to how much light you want on your image. Um, Denise is going to show you an experiment on light. Uh, but with this, what I'm going to try and explain to you is I'm going to take three images now. Um, I'm at f4.4 on this lens, that's about the lowest I can go. And I've got the, four, the three canals in front of me. And uh, what I'm going to do is explain depth of field and what the difference is on depth of field. So at the moment I'm at 4.4 and what that's doing is it's shallowing out the background. And if I put it onto video for you, you'll be able to see the difference when I, as I'm talking through it. So you'll see at the moment you've got this uh, first one in the foreground. You can't see my finger pointing, but uh, the first one in the foreground is nice and sharp at f5 because uh, now i'm on video it's gone up to f5 and now if i move my focus point back up to the next one you'll see some writing appear as i zoom in now the writing's appeared there on the left hand side and you can now see the writing appeared now that i've focused in the middle of the image but the first post uh, the first um canal lock is what i'm trying to say the first canal lock has now gone out of focus but the house at the background still out of focus and if i go up to the house in the background or the third lock and focus on that one You'll see that the writing goes back out of focus but the house at the background is really really sharp so now if i was to flick back over to photos and take three photos for you set at those different positions so we'll start off with the first one take a first one two second timer we've gone back down to f4.4 you'll see the first one's focused this is really basic it's simple stuff explaining depth of field now I'll focus on the lettering in the middle that's going to take one in the middle so the background and the foreground is definitely out of focus then i'm going to focus back up on the top one where the house is going to be nice and sharp and you'll see the writing's just out of focus. So that's basically three ways of explaining the depth of field uh, that's caused by f-stops. So that's a shallow depth of field. So now if I open my depth of field right up to f22 and focus on the foreground, you'll see that there's less out of focus in the background, if that makes any sense to you. 
And then if I focus now on the lettering at F20, we're on F20, why are we on F20? Go to F22, let's start again, let's go back to that first one. So focus on the first one. Now because I've got a zoom lens, it's not going to be perfectly all sharp in the background. But if I now go back to the second one, you'll find that there's a big difference between F4 and F2 point, uh, and F22. And this is not probably the best way of explaining this on a zoom lens. But I was just trying to explain the difference in depth of field for you. Right, so we're using a zoom lens. You can see the difference in the, th the two different images between F22 and F4. The F22, you're getting more of the background in focus. But because I'm using a zoom lens at 135 millimeters, it's making everything in the background pretty much blur out anyway. So I'm going to try this a little bit different. I'm going to see if I can do the similar sort of thing. I'm going to set the camera up now wider. So we're now out at 55 mil. And I'm going to do the same thing at F4. I'm going to start off on F4, or as low as it will possibly go. It'll go right down to 3.5 now. And I'm going to focus on the foreground and this should help a little bit more to give you a bit more difference in what you're going to get on a standard lens. So this is at f3.5, focus on the first one. Now I'm going to focus on the lettering at 3.5 and then I'm going to focus on the house at the background. I'm going to put all these images up together just to see if you can actually see the difference in them. And then I'm also going to do the same f22, wind it right up to f22. Where are we? Just there. Focus on the first one again, and you should get pretty much everything in focus this time. But the problem with using F22 in, a, in an image um, is that you'll get diffraction. You get a slight bit of diffraction around the outside, which is why we don't use F22 on uh, video, uh, on um, landscape. And I am really talking rubbish. This is where I fail. I fail if I've got to think about what I'm talking about. I fail big time. If I don't know what I'm talking about, I ramble on and get most things right. So excuse me for being and sounding like a right amateur and idiot, <laughs> but that's just me when I'm trying to think about what I'm doing. So there's your images. I'm going to also put the video on to see if it makes any difference for you on the video. And I'm going to focus on the foreground at F5. Now we've zoomed out a little bit more. So there's focus on F5 and then we'll focus on the background like so. So you can see the difference in the depth of field between the foreground and the background. So it's something to be aware of when you're doing uh, photography for landscapes and stuff like that. Now if you're shooting people, if I was to get Denise to go and stand up there, she can take the camera with her. Go and stand up there dear. We're going to show you the difference now between using a shallow depth of field and having a person in it. Yeah on the post. And what we'll do now is well we're going to get a picture of Denise and we're going to zoom in and this is just there will be fine. So we're going to get Denise there and there's some trees in the background and what we're going to do is we're going to focus on Denise, Mrs C and you're going to see at F5 everything in the background now is nice and soft and blown out and if I focus now back on the background you'll see that everything is sharp and Denise is out of focus. So let's go back over to uh, photos and let's get a shot and show you what I mean. So F4 Focus on Denise, she's going to pull a pretty smile. Smile! She's staring right into the sun, which is just not ideal for things like this. And you'll see that everything in the background is out of focus, which is the way we like it. Right, you can come back now, dear. Now, I did actually take a couple of shots of her last week just to really pull out the, the background and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, not very not very professional right so it causes softness in diffraction in f22 but there are another reason you should use f22 and the sun's in my face now um, if you're trying to get the sun stars and stuff like that by going down to f22 and f18 if you're focusing on the sun that's where you get your sun stars in the image and i'll show you an image i took this morning that's got a sun star in it because i use that exact same formula by shutting it right down to f22 it's the light that's coming through the edge of the blades when it's shut right down tight and light creeping through the edge of the blades is what causes your sun stars uh, so that's how that works if you're also after a slower shutter speed and you've got no ND filters, again, stopping the light down, you'll get a longer shutter speed. And if you want a faster shutter speed, opening the lens up, uh, so going down to an F4, F2.8, you're going to get a faster shutter speed because it's going to let more light in the camera. So you need to stop that light by closing the shutter speed down. So there's letting less, less and less in at the amount of time. It's all about that balance of the triangle. And I'm not really into the triangle. Whatever looks right on the back of my camera, I'm happy with. Now, there are other ways of doing this. You can put ND filters on. 
uh, and you can focus stack as well. The best focus for landscape in general is about f8 to f11. That's normally the sharpest you'll get for your lens. No matter what the lens is, it's about the sharpest because it's the mid-range. The mid-range is definitely the best position to be in. And if you do that on mid-range on something like this, you can focus stack the image. And I'll do you an experiment to just show you as well. I'm going to put the camera onto f8. I'm going to focus on the first one. Let's get the camera set back up again. Something like that. I'm going to focus on the first one. I'm going to take three images and I'm going to focus stack and I'm going to show you that you get everything in focus. So that's the first one on the first post. And then we'll go up to the right and on the second post. This is all at F8. Standard images. I'll show you the three images as we go along and then I'll focus stack and I'm going to show you the final one. And then we focus on the house at the background. That gives me three images focused in three different parts through the image. And then when I put all them together, that's going to make me a full, complete sharpness from front to back, which doesn't always look good, but if you're blowing up the prints and making prints, it's definitely one to work on. So that's what I've got to say about f-stops, and I'm going to pass you over to Mrs. C, and she's going to explain her little side of it. Right, a, re a really easy way that I explain um, how f-stops affect the light going into the camera with the boys at school is to compare the camera. Basically, the camera is, is the same as an eye okay same as an eye so really visual experiment that you can actually you know use to explain is if you cover up one eye okay so technically you're making one side of your, your face uh, in the dark night time okay daytime night time that'll do mm -hmm. um the minute i take my hand away we all know what happens to the iris but to people that don't quite get that a wide aperture means a small number and that's uh, that's allowing um, it, it's a wider aperture because it wants to get more light in right it needs more light in so if Paul is focused properly on my eye you will see what my pupil does okay oh that's bright all right and that is a really visual way quite hard to see that then was it yeah do you want me to try and do it again I think because it's quite bright outside. How about if I do this side? Side the other eye, yeah. Yeah, okay. Because what it will do is it'll open up your iris, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah. What we're actually doing is restricting the light that's going into my eye. So my iris is going to really open up, okay, to try and let the light in. It's really uncomfortable having the camera that close to my face. <laughs> but hopefully this time we'll be able to see it. Okay, ready? That reacts really fast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's to get, that's to just put across the idea that when you're restricting the light or when the light's low, you need a bigger aperture to let the light in. The minute the light comes up, the iris straight away will shrink because obviously that's to protect your eye. But that's exactly the same way that the camera works. But you just have to manually do it to restrict the amount of light going in. Really simple, easy way of explaining that. Um, you know the, the wide and narrow apertures and what they do when letting light into the camera. We're going to redo that experiment as well. We want to try and keep this real. This is real time. This is what we try and do. We try and keep everything real. But what we're going to do is we're going to redo that um, experiment with Denise's eyes. She does it at school, so we know it works. Um, so we'll redo that when we get home. We'll clip it onto this video for you just so you can see what it is that happens. Because what she's basically explaining is your iris will close down when there's less light in it. No, oh, you know your iris will open up when there's less light in it so at night time your iris in the middle of your eyes are going to be really really wide which is letting the light in like a camera you need to let the light in and on a bright side like this your iris is going to be absolutely pinhole. tiny like a little tiny weeny pinhole just to stop the light getting in because it's blinding you so that's basically what we're trying to explain with that and that's how the camera works as well so yep yeah, hope that's um taught you something a little bit about f-stops and uh aperture i suppose the basic thing about f-stops is the bigger the number, the smaller the hole. The smaller the number, the bigger the hole. I know it's back to front, really confusing for someone like me that's really difficult at learning stuff. Um, but yeah, that's basically how it works. You'd have thought that when they started cameras, it would have worked the other way around, but I'm sure someone will explain the reasons why. So yeah, thanks for watching. Sometimes it's just everything's in reverse. It is everything's you try in reverse, yeah. that to kids. <laughs> everything's in reverse. Everything's back to front, everything's in reverse. Yeah, so till next time, we're going to do something else. Check out the uh, shutter speeds and check out the ISOs. Just a basic explanation. Like I say, this is not pro stuff. This is basic, simple knowledge just to give you a bit of an insight. Ciao for now.